Hey and welcome to Neverwinter with Aragon. So I'd like to give a build update for Rise of Tiamat particularly. However, this build will work across a wide variety of content as it doesn't have anything anymore specific to killing dragons. I'll go over why. Now when in combat with all my gear procked off with my buffs, my stats look like this. Power is just at 88% and will with a runic aura from the healer, that'll be capped out. Crit strike, I'm not going to really worry about a 0.3% and otherwise accuracy is pretty much our dump stat as we focus on that last. Now you can see right here all the different buffs that we are using. Our butcher's focus from gear, bunch of this other stuff from gear and ultimately the buff food here is cord storm for crit severity and crit strike rating sambo cade from the stronghold just a bit of move speed and a tiny bit of hp as well don't need to really worry about that squash soup potency and your well-rested campfire buff and you can see the other gear things that have been procked off there with protectors camaraderie from our active companion now what have i actively gone and changed from my previous build I would highly recommend again going back and watching that as it's a more in-depth overview of my build if you haven't seen it already. Where here we're just going to quickly go over and skim through the things we are using, not really give any explanations as to why. You can see with the gear we're running with three power modifications, that's the armor kits and one crit severity. The weapons again got Judas Flurry there with combat advantage and recharge speed. On the right side here, of course, we have those combat advantage jewels and we have switched over to the Soothsayer's Ring of Absolution instead of the ring for giving damage against dragons. Now, the reason for this is when you go into Tiamat and you get to the final phase where you have to defeat Tiamat herself. We so nearly got pushed off there. This chest, Tiamat's chest, which you just have to beat on, is not unfortunately considered a dragon. Now, when it gets fixed and potentially it does become considered a dragon, then I would switch back to that ring. But right now, since it's not considered a dragon, there is no point stacking any damage against dragon buffs, as you only have the head phase where it doesn't last particularly long. You kill each of the five heads and there's no rush on that either. There is the claw phase, but realistically, we get through it so fast that it really isn't going to matter. So we've mainly just switched to this ring and then adjusted a few things. You can check out my enchantments here. Powers still remain the same, except we've switched to the feet back alley tactics since we managed to cap our crit then with using that ring. The back alley tactics gives us the benefit of up to 10% more damage based on how empty our action points are. So using this, make sure to cast your daily power before you use assassinate and before you use your mount combat power. Boons still remain the same. I believe the guild stronghold with the power boon here and the companion setup is this just here. Generally like to run with Succubus as my active companion within the trial. You can of course use any of the other alternatives. Personally, I haven't found any other companion to be as good, even in terms of just the raw damage output. And the reason is because if she dies, she gets revived and does her big kiss, which is a massive damaging effect. And that can cause her to deal a lot more burst damage, which is favorable in Tiamat as there is a lot of phasing with regards to going out from AOE fights to fighting Severin to fighting each of those dragon heads etc etc and so having a companion which can do a mix of aoe and single target along with actually providing a vulnerability effect is overall in my opinion the best keep in mind there's a male variant which is the Icabus. now you could argue paranoid delusion sure it's got the best single target damage but again not everything in that trial is single target and it steals more consistent damage over time versus something that has burst damage and again something with burst damage is more favorable when you have a lot of phasing and that's the same with the pseudo dragon the gith is a very good contender for the succubus i have used it and it does perform fairly well but in my opinion is still not as good as the succubus and then of course you have the option to use other alternative support companions like a black death scorpion starward lion dreads etc etc although people will not like using the stalwart line at all the way it has the weird interaction with the band of air proccing it and then crediting that damage of other procs to you instead of the person who actually 
dealt the damage. Mounts generally, I believe, stays the same with the ferocity there, and you can see our insignias just here. Protector's camaraderie gives us that extra defense and crit severity, which is nice. Our gladiator's gal simply for the move speed and three assassins covenant for the stats. Main focus you want with collars is encounter powers and crit severity. And that's about it for my build. Again, the buffs that we are using is mainly these ones here. Flask of Potency, Squash Soup, Wildstorm Elixir, Sambocade, and an Invocation Blessing for our Critical Severity. We get this one right here, Righteous Boon. And then you can use a Dragon Potion for the Claw Phase and the Head Phase if you so wish. We are using the Forger's Box and the Wondrous Dragon. I mainly use the Wondrous Dragon for the action point gain. However, it might be advisable to use the Hawk and the Doohickey rotating between when you're in AoE and single target. Just not a fan of their cast times and it can sometimes just be better to keep using Dealer's Flurry and end up proccing the Band of Air for more damage than your Hawk would deal. And again, this is the list of those buffs all procced out with a look then at our stats when we're in combat with all these gear bonuses procced off. Not bad at all. And within the trial, you can see we can deal a considerable amount of damage. I will admit though, over time, people will beat me in damage. And the reason is because they'll learn mechanics. They'll get better overall at just playing their class. I am by no means the best rogue out there at all. The reason I do get top damage at the beginning when trials come out is because I learn the mechanics pretty fast by studying them, analyzing what happens next and so on, which allows me to end up knowing what happens and getting my timing a bit better than others. So overall, hopefully this is somewhat insightful for you guys and good luck with your loot in Master Tiamat. I personally haven't got anything good which kind of sucks. So again, I'd like to give a massive thank you to all of these channel members for the continued support. And if I presented this well, consider leaving the video a like. If you're new around here, consider subscribing. We'll see you guys around. Goodbye for now.